Hello and welcome back to another update as we cover the latest developments throughout the front line in the Russo-Ukrainian war. We start out with the developments in the south where the Russians have managed to advance to the east of Robotine to the north of Verbove and here they are looking to bypass the Ukrainian fortifications here to the south by moving up towards the northern fortifications which will allow them to then start pushing towards the main road between the eastern parts of Novorokovka up the way to the northern parts, bypassing all of the fortifications by Robotine. This could be a new strategy where the Russians will be looking to completely bypass the whole salient of the Ukrainian fortifications by simply going through the main road. This, however, is a very risky tactic as you'd likely have to go through large heaps of minefields here to the east of Novodanilivka. And therefore, it is unlikely that the Russians will launch such an objective or operation. However, it is likely that they'll look to capture the fortifications here to the northeast and may look to flank and pincer maneuver, attack the Ukraine fortifications to the northeast of Robotine, moving through them to reach Robotine from the east, where the Ukrainian fortifications and personnel are the strongest by the village itself and are weaker the longer eastwards you go. And therefore, we're seeing that the Russians have managed to advance and progress and hold their advancements here to the east by Verbove, on the contrary to the fighting by Robotine, which is constantly being pushed back. These advances here to the northwest of Verbove were confirmed with this geolocated footage, indicating that the Russians have managed to advance and reach the next lines of defense of the Ukrainians to the north of these positions. Moving on to the next section of the front line, we see here to the north of Priotne, the Russians have had a very small advancement to the northwest of the village. This is yet another practice of the probing attacks that have been taking place over the past few weeks. We've seen some to the northwest of Ehorivka, southwest of Uledar, north of Priotne, and southeast of Uliaipole. So we're seeing that these are continuing as Russians are testing out the Ukrainian fortifications and defenses throughout this section of the front. Moving on to the next part, we see here in the direction of Berdyshi that the advancements and clarification of the front has happened. The Russians managed to push through the southern parts of Berdyshi and through the pond here to the southwest of the village. We see that they've reached the western parts. However, the northern parts of the village is still under Ukrainian control, and we see that this is an area that can easily be resupplied, so there's no cutting off supplies or connection between the two, it is likely to isolate the northern parts from the southern parts and allow the Russians to launch attacks towards the northern parts. However, this requires that the Russians take advantage of the situation right now while they still have units here in the western parts to consolidate their gains and gain full control over Berdyshi. But so far, there is heavy fighting taking place as the Ukrainians are not trying to give up any of their territory but are fighting for it all and also launching counterattacks to try and regain lost positions here in the west. Moving on to the next section of the front line, we see here in the northern parts between the border of Ukraine and Russia through Belgorod, Kharkiv, Sumy and Kursk regions. There is constant fighting where the Free Russia Legion continues to launch attacks into Russian territory. In this section of the front line, we're seeing that the Ukrainians have started launching these offensive operations ahead of the Russian election for PR reasons. The main reason or main objective of these operations is to gain control over some villages by the borderline to try and get some sort of photo operation where they can claim that they have taken control over some of these villages and just to damage Putin's image to try and create some fear, create panic between the Russian population by the borders and try to hit the Putin's ratings uh, ahead of the election. So these operations do not really have any military value at all, especially considering that the majority of the Russian soldiers fighting by the border are simply conscripts and border guards as well as FSB units, which do not fight within the territory of Ukraine. There is, however, the effect of the Russian Air Force being redirected to deal with the border clashes and Russian Guard units being sent to help the defenses to make sure that the Ukrainians do not gain control of any of these villages. And this ends up resulting in these large casualties that the Ukrainians are suffering from these battles, as we see in this footage here.
We start out with this footage from the Russian Ministry of Defense, which shows the first part heavy bombardment of Russian airstrikes on these positions of the Ukrainian incursions into Russian territory. Last, largely, the fighting is taking place in the border area within Ukrainian territory, but there are also some parts where the Ukrainians have managed to enter Russian territory. Then there's a sequence of armored vehicles of the Ukrainians and tanks of the Ukrainians being destroyed here in the border area after the heavy fighting has taken place. We also see engineering vehicles and armored personnel carriers indicating both mine clearing vehicles to get rid of the mines and also armored personnel carriers to bring infantry to the front. At the same time, there is reports coming here from the central parts in the southern parts of the Sumy region towards the village of Kosinka within Russia. There is reports of a Ukrainian helicopter raid that dropped infantry into the village and they started fighting within the village. But it was then reported that the Russians, after finding out about this operation, went to cut them off and managed to separate them from the supply lines through the border crossing and the Ukrainians were unable to gain control over the border crossing meaning that the infantry was surrounded by the Russians and fighting continues till this moment but it is likely that they will either surrender or fight until their last breath. The fighting also takes place here in the village of Popivka and Spodaryushino here between the Russian and Ukrainian border and finally, there's the parts here by Rishivka and Tetkino. Rishivka is the village where there was a picture taken by some of these Free Russia Legion's soldiers that indicated that they were still within Ukrainian border in Rishivka instead of the Russian border by Tetkino. So with this, we see that fighting continues in these three areas mainly. There's then also reports that the Ukrainians are gathering troops towards an attack towards Nechotevivka. And with this, we see that although there are fortified areas here by the border areas, the Ukrainians are launching these attacks in hopes of gaining control over some of these border villages. The Russians decide to respond to these fighting by Popivka and Kosinka by blowing up this bridge here between the village of Velika Pusarivka and Popivka here to the north to prevent proper communication between the eastern and western parts and cooperation between the two sides. We then move on to this next video, which shows a Russian drone stalking a Ukrainian tank moving through the border areas where it detects where it ends up standing by in cover and camouflaged to prevent exactly what happens next. And that is a Lancet drone hitting this tank from its firing position on the western parts of the border area. The nature of the fighting taking place here in the border area is mainly the Ukrainians gathering armored vehicles and infantry to move through the border area under cover of artillery and drones as well as multi-launch rocket systems launching attacks across the border on the Russian side. While the Russians are responding with their air force and artillery mainly, they withdrew from the border villages to allow the Ukrainians to enter them, after which they get heavily bombarded, after which the Russians then launch a counterattack to regain control of the village and push the Ukrainians out. So they're using their typical defensive tactic of withdrawing to avoid casualties, then hitting the other side, in this case the Ukrainians, with heavy bombardments before launching a counterattack under the cover of heavy artillery fire and airstrikes to then launch successful counterattacks. This has so far proven very effective for the Russians as the Ukrainians have yet to capture a single village across the border area after two days of fighting. And it will now enter the third day where the Russian Legion is saying that the next day they will launch a series of attacks all across the border area from the Bryansk region and down to the Belgorod region. They will launch attacks all throughout the front in numerous locations and they say they will start those attacks at 7 a.m. And the 15th of March is the first of three days for the Russian election taking place between the 15th and 17th of March. And with this we can see that the objective is clearly the, to disrupt and create panic during the Russian election. And that is going to be all for this update. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.